What an all-star game last night. We will talk about that. And Manny Machado going to the Dodgers. Find out and more on the first pitch. Roll the intro. Fantastic All-Star game last night, and what a way to wrap up the 2018 All-Star week. We will dive right into the All-Star game, and covering everything from inning to inning, pitch to pitch, play by play, we will get into all of that, and it was such a fantastic game. Let me tell you, I was just about to go to sleep, and then things happen, boom, 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 we'll talk about it. So let's start the first inning. Max Scherzer was the starting pitcher for the NL in his home ballpark, and you could tell there was a ton of emotion behind it, firing almost 100 miles an hour, and he, you know, he was ready. He was out there pitching in his own ballpark, loving every moment of it, and that was just a really good thing to see right off the bat. He struck out Mookie Betts on a slider, Jose Altuve on a fastball. He did walk Mike Trout, but then got out of the inning unscathed, and that was an awesome moment for him to get out there in his home crowd and, you know, pitch a pretty good inning. And, you know, only a walk to Mike Trout doesn't hurt you. Still zero after the top of the first. Then let's talk about Boston. That was Sale going out there to pitch in the bottom of the first inning. He did a pretty good job, too, scoreless as well. Struck out one, and that was pretty much it for the starter for Sale. He was out, and the AL really kind of staggered their pitchers and, you know, kind of just kept moving it along. The AL or excuse me, the NL did pitch Scherzer a second inning, and that could have been a mistake. Obviously, they were going to put him out there in an exhibition game against, uh, you know, these all-stars in his home ballpark, but it could have been a mistake because on 0-1, Mr. Judge got a high inside fastball, took it deep, and the AL leads 1-0. Now, Judge had faced Scherzer last year one time, and uh, they were talking about it last night. Scherzer got Judge out. This time, Judge got the best of him. Is this a possible matchup we could see in a future World Series or maybe next year All-Star game? We'll have to see. Uh, right now, it's tied 1-1, one to -one, but the AL is leading 1-0 to zero in the real game. Uh, this didn't take long, though, to increase their lead as Mike Trout comes up in the top of the third inning. Boom! Scoops a fastball off of Jacob DeGrom. It goes into the bullpen, and the AL leads 2-0. to zero. Now, it didn't stay a shutout for long either because in the bottom of the third inning, Wilson Contreras is in his first home run. Uh, he hit a home run in his first All-Star game and a line drive to left field. It is now 2-1, to one, and that was off of Blake Snell. Now, Snell had, had a good season. He definitely deserved to be an All-Star, but the last start he had against the Twins, go Twins, uh, he really kind of struggled in the All-Star game. He really kind of struggled as well, not throwing a lot of strikes. It was, uh, you know... A little bit interesting. He was kind of all over the place. He did get a couple strikeouts, uh, but he did give up a home run to Wilson Contreras as well. Kind of all over the place, but definitely still deserving to be an all-star. The AL still leads 2-1. to one. Now we'll skip forward a little bit. Nothing really happened in the middle innings here from the 4th to the 6th. It was definitely a pitcher's duel. Uh, Jose Barrios came in, shut him down. Huh. Almost gave him a home run to Yadier Molina, but he had a pretty good outing as well. But nothing really happened. It was mostly a pitcher's duel with a couple of blips and bloops here from Judge and Trout, who I really thought were going to be the MVP um, if, you know, it didn't continue the way it did. Aaron Judge hit a home run, then he walked. Mike Trout walked, and then he hit a home run. But uh, that changed quickly as we got into the bottom of the seventh and moving forward. So let's, let's go to the bottom of the seventh inning. It is the NL's turn to bat. Trevor Story up at the plate. 0 1 count. Here's Morton with a 98 mile an hour fastball. Boom. And it's a line drive shot into the first row. And, you know, I got to say, uh, these guys up there definitely just swinging at the fastball, trying to have fun with it in this exhibition game. Morton threw a fastball. Trevor Story teed off on it inside, got the line drive, and it went out of the park. This is where things get. Very, very interesting. So now it's a tie game. It's 2-2. Two two, and let's let's go to the top of the eighth inning. AL's up at the plate. And since Sir Chu leads things off, he gets a single. Alex Bregman, who we'll talk about later, strikes out swinging. And then George Springer singles on a sharp line drive. 
to the left fielder as well. So those runners on first and second. Here comes Gene Segura, who uh, he got lucky. Uh, this was an offensive sub. Gene Segura came in for Francisco Lindor. On a 3-2 count, Francisco Lindor, or excuse me, Gene Segura, pops one up over by the dugout. And what a point in this game to drop a ball. Over the dugout, I don't know if Vado just was running out of room. He couldn't find the wall, just couldn't hang on. Reaches over the wall, the ball, boom, in and out. Tried to juggle it, and he missed it. That was an error on uh, Joey Vado. And let me tell you, Gene Segura took advantage of it. Next pitch, see you later. Three run home run. And at this point, I thought it was over. Sure, a lot of people thought it was over. Gene Segura hit a three-run home run uh, to left center field, and that was off of the pitcher Hater. That's right, Hater had a struggling night. <laughs> he was really struggling, especially in that eighth inning, giving up the three-run shot. But uh, that that gave the AL a five-to-two lead, and then in that inning, Mitch Moreland also singled, and then uh, Jan Gomes and Brantley both got out as well. But in the top of the eighth inning, three runs on the board for the AL. I thought it was over. And then right in the bottom of the eighth inning, Christian Yelich comes back. Left center field. Home run. It is now 5-3. to three. But things don't stop there. Let's go to the bottom of the ninth. Bottom of the ninth inning. Here comes Trevor Story up again. He strikes out swinging. There's one out. JT Romuto walks. And you know how much walks can hurt. Because Scooter Jeanette comes up, swing, and a line drive to right field, ties the game up at 5. It is 5-5 five, five going into the bottom of the ninth inning. Unfortunately, Jesus Aguilar just flew out to center field. That could have walked it off. But no, we will head into extras. And I can't tell you how good this must feel for Alex Bregman. Let's go to the top of the 10th. Alex Bregman on a 2-2 two -two count. Didn't win the home run derby. Didn't win the first round of the home run derby. Got beat by Schwarber because his ball hit the wall. The tying ball hit the wall out in left field. And he would have tied Schwarber. Uh, they would have gone to a playoff and see who would have won now. Probably would have been Schwarber. But hey, Bregman comes up in the all-star game in the top of the 10th inning and becomes the hero. He homers on a line drive to left field. And the AL lead 6-5. Now that's not it because here comes George Springer on the very next pitch. Swings. And that ball has also gone back-to-back -back home runs on back-to-back -back pitches from back-to-back -back Houston players. Then Segura singles, line drive. Mitch Moreland singles. Brantley has a sacrifice fly. And the AL leads 8-5. <laughs> Things aren't over yet though. Joey Votto comes up in the bottom of the 10th. Hits a home run 8-6 is the score and unfortunately Yelich, Blackman, and Kane go out one, two, three. Your AL wins the All-Star game eight to six. Now some crazy things that happened. Altuve got his first All-Star hit in what his sixth All-Star appearance. He got his first hit. Uh, Mike Trout is now six for six All-Star games uh, or he has six straight hits in his All-Star appearances. That's pretty cool. Judge Hit a home run in the first inning off of Scherzer or the second inning off of Scherzer. Uh, your winning pitcher was Diaz. Your losing pitcher was Stripling. And your save was Hap. And now we get into the most probably amazing stat of the night. There were 10 home runs hit by a combined the two combined teams. The previous record was 6. Now I'll try to put this graphic up on the screen here. But these 6 players... That were hitting home runs in the last game. That was in 1971. So the record was not only shattered. But these guys hit four more home runs. To the likes of Johnny Bench. Harmon Killebrew. Roberto Clemente. Uh, Reggie Jackson. And Hank Aaron. I believe. I think those are uh, the guys who hit the home runs. Back in 1971. That is a list of guys right there. So congratulations to the 2018 All-Stars. That were able to you know, beat that record. And incredibly beat those players uh so what a night it was absolutely a fantastic all-star game if you guys missed it go to mlb.com go to youtube search up the mlb and go watch you know just a recap of that what a fantastic night there was a lot of insight from a lot of the different players that they were mic'd up as well but just a great night for baseball 
and it was an absolutely fantastic game. If you guys did not see the stat as well, I believe that it was tied. So, uh, hear me out here. So, I'm sure you guys have seen the stat. Going into this 89th All-Star game, it was tied 43 wins and 2 ties. 43 wins and 2 ties. They both had like 300 and... 630 wins or something like that and their averages were like the same absolutely crazy the AL did pull ahead though now having 44 wins two ties and the NL still having 43 but absolutely fantastic these two teams are dead even every year and you know just a perfect example of that as well going into extra innings and you know having a tie game in the bottom of the ninth inning so what a fantastic way to end the all-star week now let's talk about Manny Machado Manny Machado will be traded, and it looks like it will be to the Dodgers. Now, let's go over what we know. Ken Rosenthal, lead reporter, you know, for MLB trades and MLB news, reported. Can report with more certainty Machado to the Dodgers is happening. Among remaining questions, in addition to specifics of remaining or return beyond Diaz in the outfield, how much money, if any, the Orioles will send to the Dodgers to secure a better package to help ease the Dodgers' luxury tax concerns. So basically what that says is the Machado trade with the Dodgers is happening, obviously. They're going to get Diaz, and I read somewhere else that there could be up to five prospects and cash going towards the Orioles as well. Now let me tell you, I believe that this is a stupid, stupid bad move. Um, but let me know what you guys think down in the comments. So let me give you my take on it. Let's start with where Machado could have gone. So Machado obviously is one of the best shortstops in the AL, best shortstops in the league. Anybody's going to be grateful to have him on the team to try to win a pennant. Now if you look at the AL already, you have Boston, you have Houston, you have the A's coming up, you have Cleveland, you have you know these great teams that are already good in the AL, and then you have the Dodgers. Now, the Dodgers are one of the best teams in the NL. That's no doubt about it. They made the World Series last year, and they really want to win the World Series this year, especially with Corey Seager going down. But I just don't think this is the right move. Whoever gets Manny Machado, he's going to test free agency in the offseason. So basically, they have him for a half a season. And not even. They have him for about, you know, 60 games. That is a lot, a lot to give up. Cash, an outfielder, and five prospects to try to win a World Series. They are fully going all in, and I just don't think it's going to happen. What I would much rather see is Manny Machado go to an AL team, and I'll explain that here. So the Dodgers, they are a good team, and they definitely could use Machado. He would definitely help them. But the Dodgers already made the World Series last year. They made it to seven games. I just don't think Machado replacing Corey Seager is going to make that much of a difference. I still think they could make the World Series. They could win the pennant, sure. I just don't, I don't see it happening that they could win. Houston, they look better than they did last year. The freaking Boston Red Sox are out of their minds playing like crazy. They're on schedule or on pace for 112 wins this season. That is absolutely insane. It doesn't look like anybody could beat them. I just don't see, I mean, the Dodgers will do everything they can to try to win the World Series, and that's obviously trying to go get Machado. I just don't see it as the best thing to do when they're trading away five prospects. Now, I, I will say, I believe that getting Machado is great. That's good for them. That could help them win. I don't see it happening. And especially when you're giving up five prospects, an outfielder, and cash, that that just seems like a too much for what you're getting back for Machado. Now, let's talk about the AL. Obviously, this is a rebuilding team uh, that they really are going to have to rebuild around uh, these prospects, these younger players. Uh, for the Orioles this could be a great trade for the Orioles uh, obviously they're not going to want Machado they want Machado to go win a World Series they want him you know he's going to test free agency later so they are really trying to get his maximum amount of players maximum amount of cash whatever they can to win this trade Machado for five prospects and outfielder and cash it sounds like a great idea for them I know that there's reports about Bundy leaving there's reports about Gosman leaving there's uh, reports about even Sculpt leaving. I mean, there's all these other guys on the Orioles that, that could still, uh, you know, potentially be traded out for a young team that the Orioles could rebuild around. Now, this is why I think Machado 
should go to an AL team. If you look at the AL, it is absolutely stacked. And there are tons of tons of good shortstops. You've got Lindor, you've got Bogarts, you've got, you know, Polanco for the Twins. Go Twins. But it is absolutely stacked in the AL. And there's not really a lot of places where he could go. Now, this is why I say you should still do it. If you're going to try to win a World Series this year, if you're going to go all in like the Dodgers are, you know, why not try to get him? Like, what I was saying is, let's go with Cleveland, for example. I think Cleveland's a great example. You have Lindor, you've got Ramirez, you've got great pitching, you've got Brantley, and you've got Kipnis at second base. Kipnis, struggling this year. He's definitely not like what he used to be. So let's just say... Machado goes to Cleveland, they move Lindor over to second, or Machado goes to second, or Ramirez moves to first. You know, there are tons of different ways to look at it, and the Cleveland Indians will be unstoppable. They are already supposed to win their division. Uh, like I said, the Twins, hopefully they can catch up. But Cleveland is definitely projected to win the, win the AL Central. They're up already by like seven games. That's going to be tough to come back for anybody in that division. So I say... How do Cleveland, how can Cleveland beat Boston? How can they beat the Yankees? How can they beat Houston? They have to go get somebody else. And that's not saying they need Machado, but Machado, if they could acquire him for some prospects at Cleveland, they've got a young team, Ramirez, they've got Lindor, they've got, you know, Brantley, they've got a couple pitchers that are secured. If they can go get somebody like Machado for half a season, I don't see them being beat. Like, they would be the only team that I could see contending with Boston for a championship to go to the World Series. That's obviously just my take on it. The Dodgers, I can see them, you know, going all in. I just don't think for five prospects it's worth it. I don't know what Cleveland or anybody else would have to offer. That's the that was the big thing with the Brewers and the Phillies. They didn't have what the Orioles wanted to offer, so they couldn't trade for Machado. Even though I really think, you know, Machado even going to the Phillies or the Braves to really bump them up and try to be a contending team, that would help them so much more than the Dodgers. The Dodgers, like I've said, are already a good team. I think they could make it back to the World Series, but Machado just replacing Seager for all that they lost doesn't help them win. I, I, I'm I, going to stand by that. I think to going, going with Cleveland, going with, you know, I just throw Cleveland out there for an example, by going with the Phillies, going with, you know, somebody that can win a World Series or that is going to help them win a World Series just seems like a better option than somebody replacing another player that you just get back to the same spot with. That is ultimately my opinion, though, that I want to hear you, uh, you know, in the comments down below. I want to hear all your opinions. Am I wrong? Am I right? Do you guys think he should go somewhere else? Do you think the Dodgers getting Machado is a great trade? Will it help them win a World Series? Should he have gone to the Phillies? Or who else should be traded? Like, throw a team out there. Should the Twins get him for their entire team? Because that's pretty much what it would cost. Guys, that is going to be the first pitch today. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to come back tomorrow. I'm Brent, also known as Clem Hawks. Thanks for watching the first pitch. We'll see you then.